I literally spent less than a week on my bachelor's degree dissertation and I still got 88% and it's been like that for my master's degree and for essays now in medical school. So instead of being like most people, stressing about how hard writing a dissertation is and complaining about having to spend months doing multiple drafts, I'll tell you what I do to smash essays from start to finish and give you the best tips for each section so that you can spend the time you save to do things you actually care about. So the first tip to use from the start is gonna sound bad, but it's definitely gonna save you hours, and that's to avoid researching online and looking for references. Because what I do is that once I have my essay title, I make my essay introduction introduce the basic concepts and my hypothesis. And that's already covered from lectures or notes or even a very simple chat GPT request. So spending hours researching at this point is just wasting time on the fine details when you haven't even given the general idea of the essay, which is what an introduction is for. And it's why my second tip is use simple language in the introduction. Because I know a lot of you think, ah oh, yeah, let's use big words because it will sound like I know a lot of things. But remember, it's a real person marking your work. And when language is needlessly enshrouded in complexity, it inevitably confounds the reader's comprehension. So the simpler you make your intro, the easier it is for the examiner to try to understand what you're proving with your essay. And that already sets you apart from most people because I frame my intros to just outline why my essay title is important and what I'll cover so that the examiner knows what to expect. Like, there's no confusion. So that's the foundation of the intro done and I'll spend around 20 minutes or even less if it's like a 2000 word essay. And I'll get back to references and extra details towards the end because right now, that doesn't matter. Now for the main body of the essay, you want the final structure to consist of the key points, the evidence, critical analysis and relation to the essay title. But before you get to this stage, you need to build the foundations like you did for the intro. And the best tip I can give for this is to list a series of questions for each paragraph of the main body. Like for one paragraph of my dissertation, I had a subheading called Alzheimer's disease and the lymphatic system. So under this heading, I initially wrote down a load of questions like what is Alzheimer's disease? What is the lymphatic system? How is the lymphatic system involved in Alzheimer's disease? And what research shows this relationship? Like you get me. And it literally takes seconds to think of these bunch of questions. But I'm sure you realize that writing the answers to these questions would net you a lot of important content for your essay. And at this point, you should start reading publications, but don't start adding references to the essay just yet. Just bookmark them for now. And a tip I have for researching is to use a website called Elicit AI, because it's a good way to summarize research quite fast. Just ask it your question and it will find a list of relevant papers and summarize it for you. And if you can't use this, then an even better tip is to find one review paper on your general topic and use their bibliography to find other relevant papers because all the papers worth reading for your topic would be there. So in any case, don't just blindly search papers using a Google. And once you have these points, I have two tips. The first is to use the mark scheme set by your school or uni so that you follow exactly what they're looking for. And the second tip is to keep the main body as concise as possible by following the structure I mentioned. Point, evidence, explain, and critical analysis and relate back to your title. So as an example, the point here could be that there's an association between impaired clearance of waste from the lymphatic system and Alzheimer's disease. And the evidence for your literature online backs this through data and you explain what the data shows. And then for the higher mark, you do some critical analysis. And that just involves whether the evidence was good or bad, whether it's reliable and how you can improve on it. And as a bonus tip, you can look at existing publications on your topic and see how they suggest improvements in their discussion and get some inspiration from them if you get what I mean. Because these are just essays or your dissertation that you're trying to get done quickly not something you're trying to publish. So do what you have to do to make it quick, but still good. And a tip to make things even faster for yourself that actually helps you get a higher mark is that you should use as many diagrams as you realistically can. Because diagrams are more engaging for the examiner. It breaks that wall of text. It conveys meaning faster than words. And if the diagram just looks nice, they'll think you know your stuff, even if you don't. Like I remember, I had a diagram in my dissertation that I somewhat understood, but not fully. But on feedback, the examiner seemed to think I knew it very well and he loved it. Okay, and now you should start putting in the references that you bookmarked. But the tip I have for this is to have as many sources as you reasonably can. Like in my example, I used three sources to explain one thing when I could have explained it with that one original paper. But genuinely, the examiner is going to see this and think this guy went properly into it so they'll give those extra marks. And again, the easiest way to find those extra sources is to literally just look at the sources the original paper used. Because if it was good enough for a published paper, it's gonna be more than good enough for you as well. And now you can start to shape up the intro by using some of the references you used in the main body of the essay, or literally just Google whatever you say in the intro and search articles related to that, and that's more than enough. 
So for all of this, I take about one and a half to two hours because it doesn't actually take that long when you ignore referencing and leave that until the end. Now for the conclusion, all you need to have is a summary of your findings. So kind of similar to the intro, except there's details of the evidence, key improvements and potential hopes for the topics in the future. And the tip I have for this section is to search publications in the past year or two to see what they suggest and think of something similar. Because I think people tend to overcomplicate things when in reality, you don't need a revolutionary point to get that higher mark. Like for my dissertation, I literally just suggested a new study design that innovates on current ones. And you could see that I didn't say anything crazy. And the extra tip is don't ever manually type up your bibliography. Use a citation generator to do it all for you. And I'm sure you can just Google any random bibliography creator to do this for you. And so the conclusion shouldn't take any more than 20 minutes. So that leaves you with a bit of time in the three hours to proofread your work. And okay, look, these were things I've been doing for years to get a high mark pretty efficiently. But even though I minimise researching, there's still a lot of reading to do. So in this video here, I'll talk about how you can triple your reading speed in seven days. So click the video for more no-nonsense productivity advice so they can save even more time when you read, but also understand and learn things faster.